Hi, this is Wessel from OnYourWeather.com and today I've got another article summary for you. Today we're discussing 101 weather and weather station facts, tips and recommendations. Uh, as usual, if you find anything interesting in this video, I've uh, included a link to the actual article in the description below. So if you can't find exactly what you're looking for, or you need some more clarity, a better explanation, you can always go and read the full article below. In this case, I would actually recommend it. This is a huge topic. Um, as the heading would say, 101 uh, facts that's been listed here. So it's a big article, 20,000 words. Uh, impossible to list everything in this video itself. So I'm just going to list the highlights. If you can't find what you want, you can find the full uh, article in the description below. So, why 101 facts and tips, tricks, weather station related? Well, normally when you go and read up about weather related or weather station related topics, you normally look for something specific. Uh, you want a specific answer to a specific question. Or you've heard something um, about a certain weather phenomena and you want to read something about, and you read more, want to read up more about it. Well, sometimes though, you just want to get some general information about whether you're looking for ideas um, you, or you just, uh, just have some time to kill. Well, that's exactly what this uh, article and this video is for. For somebody who just wants to read some random information and maybe stumble upon, upon something that might be quite interesting and you want to find out more about it. Luckily, in this article as well, I'm just highlighting all the different facts and hints, tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it. But below each one, if there's a related article, I've included a link to that article in the main 101 article um, itself, if that makes sense. So you don't just get the summary, you get a link to the actual article itself if you want to find out more. And uh, that's about it. Um, before we get started, uh, you'll see at the beginning of the article, I've listed all 101 topics so that you can see what is available and in, if it's interesting for you, you can just scroll down and uh, read the actual topic itself. I've broken it down into general weather facts, which includes basically the bulk um, of the information in the article. <coughs> But I've also included some important weather tips you can take into consideration uh, when you, what you need to do when a tornado occurs, what to do during a hurricane, during a heat wave, etc. And I've also included some home weather station tips. What to include, what to avoid. I've already addressed that in another article, but I'm just addressing it again. And lastly, some climate facts. Climate is not the same as weather. We'll talk about that shortly. But uh, just something... Um, to get you started on getting to know climate better and um, seeing what all the commotion or debate or controversy is all about. So um, let's uh, let's uh, dive straight into the first few topics. And we're starting with two fairly well-known weather phenomena. Coming in at number nine is a definition of a cold front, followed by number ten definition of a warm front. So, what is the definition of a cold front? A cold front occurs when the leading edge of a large body of cold air moves into a region of warmer air. The boundary between these two air masses is called a cold front. A warm front, on the other hand, occurs when the leading edge of a large body of warm air moves into a region with cooler air. The boundary between these two air masses, where these two air masses meet, is called a warm front. Okay, these are just two general description or explanations. Luckily, I've got a full article for, of that uh, just below the section, so if you, this explanation doesn't satisfy you, you want to find out what the real difference between these two are, you can go and read the article, just click on the link um, in the description below this section. And coming in at number 14 is a topic that's been a source of major confusion and misinterpretation for many people across the world whenever they've listened or seen any kind of weather forecast where any of these phenomena have been mentioned. Uh, and that is hurricanes, typhoons and tropical cyclones. They are all essentially one and the same weather system. All three of these storm, storm systems start as tropical depressions in the warm waters of the tropics and develop from there on. 
The only difference between them is location where they occur. The term hurricane, for instance, is used when the weather system originates over the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean, or the Northeast Pacific Ocean. The term typhoon is used when the weather system originates over the Northwest Pacific Ocean. And then the term cyclone is used when the weather system develops over the South Pacific or Indian Ocean. Which brings us to number 16. The top speed at which raindrops can fall is 18 miles per hour or 29 kilometers per hour. That you might actually find a bit hard to believe if you listen to the sound of rain on the roof at night or falling through trees. It sounds a lot faster. But there are a lot of factors coming into play that slows it down. Raindrops in general aren't that big. So two factors, which is drag and resistance from air, actually causes rain to fall much slower than you would expect. Obviously, as it travels through air, um, it travels a little bit faster and it encounters air resistance and also the surface area on the raindrop itself can also cause the speed um, to be influenced in quite a significant way. So those two factors make raindrops fall much slower than you would expect. Obviously the size of raindrops uh, play a role as well. Bigger raindrops will naturally fall um, at a higher velocity than smaller raindrops. Number 21, the windiest place on earth. Obviously we all have our different preferences when it comes to wind. Some like a refreshing cool breeze every once in a while, some don't like wind at all. But I think we can all agree on is that well, one fact or one statement I think we can all agree on is that wind blowing constantly day in and day out every single week of the year is not something any one of us will enjoy. Well, in that case, you might want to stay away from Commonwealth Bay in Antarctica, which has been named the windiest place in the world. Uh, it's got an average annual wind speed of 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour. In other words, on average, every single day of the year, the wind blows at 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour. And uh, to top it off, occasionally it reaches a top speed of 200 miles per hour, 322 kilometers per hour. So... If you're not a big fan of wind, I think you should rather stay away from Antarctica, especially Commonwealth Bay. Number 23, the vertical structure or layers of the Earth's atmosphere. When, especially viewed from space, and you look at Earth's atmosphere, you would think it's just one large body of air with just one specific characteristic. Uh, actually, the Earth's atmosphere consists of five layers, with the troposphere being the closest to the planet's surface, followed by the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and lastly the exosphere. Most life as we know it can only exist in a troposphere, since oxygen and all other gases important for living is contained in this layer. Obviously there are much more to um, the Earth's atmosphere and its different layers um, than it gets explained in this little segment you see on this page. Uh, I've dedicated the whole article to the five layers of the atmosphere and I've included a link in the description below this section. So if you're interested and you would like to read more, you can find information there. At number 40 and 41, things start to get more interesting when we look at weather patterns on neighboring planets. We are quick to complain about the weather on our planet. So in that case, if we're worried about warm weather, too much rain, you might want to visit this section. If you look at precipitation alone, on Venus, for instance, it rains sulfuric acid. On Titan, which is one of Saturn's moon, you will find methane rain. And on Jupiter, it rains helium. So I think the water that falls on our planet is not much to worry about. When it comes to wind and wind speeds, uh, things doesn't get much better than this. Saturn, for instance, uh, the winds there reach speeds of up to 1,800 kilometers per hour or 1,118 miles per hour. It gets even worse on Neptune, where wind speeds tops 2,100 kilometers per hour or 1,305 miles per hour. So, yes, I don't think we have too much to complain about. At number 73, what to do during a thunderstorm. Here, I just briefly touched on... Um, general common sense um, actions you should take or shouldn't take um, when a thunderstorm occurs and it mostly re is regarding lightning strikes. 
Um, what you always should take into consideration is even if it's up to 16 kilometers, that is 10 miles away from you, um, you're still being in danger of um, getting affected by lightning from a specific thunderstorm. So the 30 second rule applies here. So what is the 30 second rule? Well, if there's less than 30 seconds from the time that you see the lightning to the time that you hear the strike, the actual thunder, uh, you're not out of danger yet. But if there's more than 30 seconds between the actual lightning strike and the time until the time you hear the thunder itself, then it's safe to go outside or it should be relatively safe. Number 78. Steps to take against monsoon dangers. Monsoon rainfall is mostly confined to Southeast Asia, specifically India. But you'd be surprised to know that parts of the United States experience monsoon weather and rainfall. Uh, so there are things to watch out during and after a monsoon. Obviously during a monsoon, the flash flooding that occurs uh, due to the heavy rainfall is a big problem. So low-lying areas should be avoided and also mountainous areas because of the mudslides that can occur um, as a result of the heavy rainfall. The most dangerous part of a monsoon, however, occurs after the monsoon, which is the waterborne diseases that breeds in the standing water that occurs for days or weeks uh, after the monsoon rainfall actually took place. So there are quite a few things you can do. Um, Precautionary, you can take your vaccinations against diseases like typhoid and cholera. Um, for malaria, you can take your malaria pills before you leave. But also, um, after a monsoon rain, make sure you avoid bathing or coming in direct contact with contaminated water. Also, avoid uh, coming into contact with infected bodily secretions. Um, avoid potentially contaminated food and also protect yourself against insect bites. Those are just a few things you need to take into consideration when you're in the monsoon re season and you're in one of the regions that experience this type of weather. Number 81. Always consider height when placing your home indoor weather station. Uh, if you look at temperature, especially indoors, it's always colder, closer to the floor, and at the ceiling you'll get your warmest temperatures. So your best option will be to place your indoor weather station somewhere in between, uh, approximately halfway between the floor and the ceiling. Now incidentally this also applies to when placing, placing your outdoor sensors. When you place your outdoor sensors make sure they're at least 5 to 6 feet above the ground. This is not only to get an accurate reading from your thermometer as well as all other sensors, it's also to create as much distance as possible between your sensors and the surface, whatever that might be, but whether that be, might be grass, uh, concrete, the top part of your roof, just create enough distance so that heat or cold generated by the surfaces doesn't interfere with your sensor array. Number 82. Choose your room where your indoor weather console will be placed very carefully. There are three places you should avoid. Your bathroom, your kitchen and rooms receiving direct sunlight. Your bathroom, obviously, the artificial humidity and temperature changes, obviously going to mess with your thermometer and humidity settings. Kitchen, the same reason. Appliances like your stove, dishwasher, the faucet, your fridge, that might seriously interfere with your both your thermometer and humidity settings as well. And lastly, avoid rooms receiving direct sunlight. Or rather, never place your indoor weather station in direct sunlight. Number 91. What is climate change? Well, in reality, climate change is normal. It occurs over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, where temperature or general weather fluctuates between extreme cold weather, like the ice ages, to periods of warmer weather and then returning back to colder weather. This is a normal fluctuation in climate that occurs throughout, like I said, hundreds of millions of years. It's normal. But the climate change, as we are debating it currently, is the accelerated or man-made uh, climate change that is abnormally accelerated and associated with global warming. And lastly, we've got number 96, climate and geography. That's basically just a relationship between your climate and the physical attributes of your of your location. In other words, uh, your the latitude 
how far you are from the equator, whether you are situated close to bodies of water, topography, whether you're close to a mountain or not, and your elevation, whether you're at sea level or at altitude. All of those attributes uh, come into play when determining the average weather conditions or the climate of your specific region. Okay, and these are just 12 of the 101 facts about weather and weather station as well as climate uh, related topics that are available in this article. As you can see, it will be close to impossible to list everything in one video alone. We're going to be here for a couple of hours. But if you've seen everything, anything that might be inter of interest to you, uh, go and read the article or just go through the list um, at the top of the article if you're interested. And uh, there may be quite a few things that catch your eye and you can scroll down and read the topic itself. And if you're lucky, there might be another article linked to that, which will give you even more information. Um, I think that's about it for now. I don't think I've left out everything. Uh, if you like this type of video, give me a like, it helps me a lot. I'm also releasing a lot of related videos explaining weather, weather phenomena, um, giving different explanations of the other weather occurrences as well. Uh, if you want to stay updated, hit the subscribe button as well as the little notification button next to it and you'll be reminded as soon as another video gets released. Until next time, keep your eye on the weather. Enjoy this article. Cheers.